Okay, now this section is expressing a function as a composition of two functions. So basically they gave you a function and they want to know what f and g would be so that when you take the composition of them, um, you get what you have been given. So basically you want to figure out this, right? Because this notation means this. The idea is you're trying to identify the inside function and the outside function. Okay, and the only rule I have to give you on this section is you cannot let f of x or let g of x be the variable x all by itself. If you tell me that f of x is x all by itself or that g of x is x by itself, then you've done it wrong and the computer's going to tell you it's incorrect. Okay, so f of x has to be something other than just an x and g of x has to be something other than just an x. Because what I'll see people do is they'll say, oh, well, I see the problem like this. I see the problem like this. And so then f of x, the inside, is the x, and g of x is the outside, which is 7x to the 6 plus 3. This is completely wrong. You have not done what it has asked you to do, okay? However, this would be a correct thinking, right? And so then now, in this case, f of x is the red function, x to the 6, because that's inside, and g of x is 7x plus 3. Right? Instead of writing the x to the 6, you put an x in its place. And, and if you notice, if you were to take this function and plug it into there, if you were to take this function and plug it into there, you would end up with the 7x to the 6 plus 3 after simplifying function you were given okay so I just found the composition just to check my work so I am correct f of x is supposed to be x to the 6 and g of x is supposed to be 7x plus 3 so it's definitely important that you check your answers and so I, again the idea here is to identify the inside function and identify the outside function okay um, and I want to do this one next because this one is a little special, okay? So I'm going to do this one next, and this one is obvious as to which one is the inside function because you notice the 2x plus 3 inside the parentheses, right? And so you could have that, which means that f of x is going to be the red expression, g of x is going to be the expression in green. And instead of writing the red stuff, I'm just going to put an x in place of all of that red stuff. So it looks like x cubed or just x cubed. Okay. So now if I do the composition, do I get the original? So when I try to do f of g of x, that means f of, oh, I'm sorry. Dun, dun, dun. I'm doing these backwards. Okay, so I did this one wrong. Notice that I put F on the outside and G on the inside. So when I'm labeling, the inside function needs to have been labeled G. And then the outside function needs to have been labeled F. So I actually did those backwards, okay? And it's important because I'm going to address it over here in a minute. So the inside needed to be G and the outside needed to be F. And when I plugged G into F, just like this is telling me, plug G into F, we get this function here. So the same thing here, the inside function is G and the outside function is F. So when I find F of G of X, it means find F of 2X plus 3. And then that means to plug the 2x plus 3 into the f function, which means I end up with 
2x plus 3 to the power 3, which is exactly what I had up there. So these functions are correct. f of x is going to be x cubed, and g of x is going to be the 2x plus 3. So key thing, the inside function is g. The outside function is f. Now, this one here. I could apply the same logic that I did there, okay? But I'm going to do this problem in two different ways because depending on how you see it, there are two different answers for this problem, and both of them will be valid because neither one of them will just be x, okay? So one way I can see this as it's obvious there's a cube root, and then I have this on the inside. That's obvious. Okay, and so then I can say that the g of x, which is the inside function, is 3x squared plus 2. And so then the outside function would be the cube root, and all the red stuff would turn into an x. This is why colors is helpful. Okay, and so notice that neither one of these expressions is just x all by itself. Okay. And if I were to plug g of x into f, I would have exactly what's there. There is another way to visualize this, though. I also could have seen it like that. And so then in this case, the g of x function is x squared, and the f of x function is the cube root of 3, and instead of the red stuff, I'm just going to put x plus 2. So notice that f and g, neither one of them is literally just the variable x. This one's x squared, which is not just the variable x. And then this one, of course, has a lot more going on than just x. So this is also a correct answer. And if I were to plug g into f, it would literally say 3 and then x squared plus 2, which is exactly what was up there. So for this problem, there are two possible answers. Some of them will have more than one possible answer, and some of them will only have one possible answer, like for instance, A and C. Part B had two possibilities, but this is the more common answer, just because whenever there's parentheses or square roots involved, um, people tend to usually, their eyes automatically see what's in the parentheses as the inside function, and what's inside the radical as the inside function, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just typically how you need to, um, typically what people see first, okay? Now, what is the point in all this, right? What, why is it important that I know how to identify an inside function and an outside function? Because later when you get into calculus, um, and it's in Cal 1 and Cal 2 and in Cal 3. So this inside-outside idea is going to come back and it's going to be very important that you're capable of doing this. Because in all three of those calculus classes, you will need to be able to, one, know how to manipulate algebraic expressions, and two, be able to identify insides and outsides. Because if that's the case, there are certain rules and properties that you could use and apply that make things a lot easier and then sometimes it's the only possible way to solve the problem is if you recognize that there's insides and outsides and sometimes it may be easier to if an expression does have two different ways of thinking about it insides and outsides sometimes it might be more convenient to be seeing it this way and sometimes it might be more convenient to be seeing it this way so it's really important that you're able to identify both possibilities Okay, so you definitely want to practice with this problem a lot because it is going to come back to us in calculus.